fun to make these things. It's so gorgeous. If this doesn't inspire you to consider looking into needlepoint, honestly, I don't know what will. Welcome, wonderful people. I am Lindsay Crane. These are my retro craft dreams, and today we are having a library day. I'm kind of really excited about this one. I want to inspire you today. In my previous library day videos, we kind of looked at some more questionable items from the 70s and 80s. Some of them I still liked, but I kind of liked them because they were questionable. But today I'm going to share with you some 70s needlepoint designs that just, oh, they take my breath away. They are stunning. We're talking textural, artistic pieces that really are the core of what inspired me to want to do more needlepoint in the first place. Now, if you've seen needlepoint, online, in stores, wherever. Um, I feel like modern needlepoint designs, hand-painted canvases, beautiful as they are, they are a certain style. These are not that. These are entirely different. I have several books here. I'm not gonna go through all of any of these books. Um, if there are some that you're more curious about, maybe I can have a dedicated episode for that particular book at some point in the future. But today I just really want to show you some of my favorite pieces in these books to hopefully inspire you to look into the craft some more. And if you don't know what Needlepoint is, I can and probably will do a whole separate video going over what Needlepoint is, what it isn't, why you might want to choose it, all in the lead up to my planned stitch along, which I will be doing needlepoint, but um, you won't have to, but I kind of hope to inspire you to try it. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm going to swap the cameras around. I'm going to put the bad camera on my face so that you can see these pieces in all of their glory. And uh, I can't wait for you to see them. Okay. Let's jump in. Let's start with one of my favorite books in general. And that is in part because um, it's corduroy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this book is covered in corduroy like it just it's this is the time life book of needlecraft adapted from the art of sewing series and it is from 1976 now this book has several different crafts so we are just going to look at some of the needlepoint stuff this doesn't have as much inspirational images in it, but I think there are a couple things that I should show you. So firstly, we can make belts with needlepoint and this one, yeah. I mean, what do I need to say about a rainbow? Like, it's beautiful. We have a zippered pouch. Now these are all done in tent stitches, which is basically like a half cross. It's done in a little bit of a different way. Um, although if you don't need your material to stand up to wear, you could do a half cross. Like if you're just framing it, um, as a picture on the wall, you can do a half cross. But for something like this, you do something called a tent or continental stitch, um, that covers the back. I'm trying to keep this quick. I do not want this to be a 40 minute episode. We have a director's chair, like just a simple little kind of herringbone pattern that matches the wall. Backgammon board. Okay. This would be fun. When you get to something like this. This is what I'm talking about. This is a geometric sampler. This is kind of what I will be going for in my stitch along. However, my stitch along pattern leans heavily into the Memphis Milano design style. This is one of the primary inspirations behind just doing a geometric sampler. It's just a checkered board stitch where the blue's going that way, the yellow's going that way. These might be cross stitches. So really simple stitches. It's just, oh, love that so much. Here are some more traditional style designs. This is one of those kinds of things that you can kind of just make up as you go along. Some people who do Bargello, they'll do like one stripe across and then all you have to do is mimic that exact same stripe in different colors and you end up with something like this. So you work your way across, let's say you start with the green and you make this pattern in your green. That's all you need to do. And then you just copy that for every single row and it looks stunning. Okay, next up, 
we're gonna have a look at another one that uh, may look a little familiar. So this is Lee Ward's Illustrated Library of Arts and Crafts, another collection of crafts. This one is volume one. I did use another volume uh, for my first library day. This is from 1974. All right, so here um, we have a little bit of history of needlepoint right off the bat. You can see some amazing geometric work as well as some traditional work. Both of these pieces done in tent stitches. Is there anything in here? Oh, yeah, here we go. So here, what I wanted to show you were these pieces. Now they are just still lifes. Um, they probably were, you know, designed ahead of time, painted on, but the geometric design in these just really feels like you could make it so modern. This is something like, I have 80s pieces that this would go really well with. It would go really well with my Memphis stuff. Um, this predates Memphis by about four years. Memphis actually started in the late 70s. So anyway, love that. Next. I think we need to save the showstopper for last. So I'm gonna look at, okay, this one might have something good. This is the Cruel Needlepoint World. This one might not be 70s. Is this 70s or 80s? 73. All right, I don't remember what's in this. So let's have a look. So here you can see like just a basic, basic sampler. And this is what to me really differentiates needlepoint from cross stitch. If you were to do this in cross stitch, you would have, you know, basic blocks of color. Nothing wrong with that, still beautiful. But the way that these stitches give it the texture and here they're even able to use two similar shades of one color to really enhance that texture even further. It's so simple and yet the effect is just immediate and stunning. Turkey tufting. <laughs> so you can do stuff like this in needlepoint. You can do it in regular embroidery too. Can't so much do it in cross stitch. So, oh, look at that. Here's another sampler. So here it's the yellow in the background is all the tent continental stitch and then just different blocks of color. Oh, that's so fun. And it's just a sampler. <laughs> like, And you can do that. Like you can absolutely do this. We got a Piet Mondrian style piece over here. Here we have some more like applique, like stump work kind of elements where they've needle pointed separate lily pads and then applique them on. So you have that three dimensional aspect. Really, really lovely. Oh, there's a couple in this one. This is Better Homes and Gardens Needlepoint. I mean, just all you need to do is look at the cover. They made it two versions. They made one that's a collection and then they broke down each section into individual books. So I just pulled out the individual book because it was easier. This is from 1978. Oh, okay, this one actually might be on my list to stitch. It's really a little bit mod, really simple colors. This just tent stitch. So, oh, here we go. So if you want the look of, uh, maybe not clothing, but home decor items that are knit or crocheted and you just can't seem to get the hang of knitting or crocheting, here's an example of how you can achieve something that feels like a knit or crochet item, but with needlepoint. So simple, but it, this one's made with just a variegated yarn and a couple different patterns. Here we have something that resembles a quilt. Again, if you want something that looks like a quilt, but you can't quite get the hang of sewing your seams and matching your points, you can needlepoint it. It works, it's okay. Stump work right there, a trinket box. Oh, here we go. I mean, so this is like freestyle, freeform stitchery, Pick up your yarn, pick up your canvas, stitch where you feel like it, make whatever stitch you feel like and keep switching it up and you can have just something amazing. Here's the lion and he's just got like these sampler abstract geometry all over him. He looks kind of creepy, but the general gist of these patterns is what I absolutely love. Like, oh, so, so good. We have a little close up of the line back there. Love it. And he's all done in tent stitch, except we've got some different things here and another one there, another bit of a different stitch there and there. Let's have a look at this one just to really pump up the geometric design. This is Geometric Designs in Needlepoint by Mary Jane Edmonds, published in 1976. 
So we're just gonna quickly flip through here so you can get the idea. There's a lot of patterns in here. So here is just more examples of how you can take like a geometric motif and create something really stunning just by changing up the stitches or the direction of your stitch. You know, these are, a lot of them are just straight stitches, but they're just going different directions, you know, and that's a, what a lot of this is. That's pretty fun. Um, most of these are used for things like cushions. It's plaid. It's just plaid. Color on color, still very effective because again, you have the textural element. So you can do something that's just a solid color and it's still just really impressive. You know, it has a presence because of that texture. You could use a different thread fiber as well. You could use wool for one part and silk to make the shiny parts. If they're all in the same color, like you still get that element. If you throw in different stitches, you get something like this, you know? I think there might be one more and then we're gonna jump to my favorite. Oh, real quick. There are, I mentioned that you can do them as quilts. And look, here's two. Needlepoint from America's Great Quilt Designs. Um, so we're not gonna go through these a lot, but there's like a page where I can show you that you can recreate quilt designs in Needlepoint. And it makes total sense. Like, it just works. Oh my God. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, I love it so much. Oh, this one. <laughs> So, so, so good. <sighs> oh, this one. All right, so this is the Needlepoint book by Joe Ippolito Christensen. Let's just get to the color pages. So really tense stitches on a different texture of a background. I thought there was something really fun in here. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Again, samplers. So again, this is kind of what I'll be going for in the Memphis sampler stitch along. Um, just, you know, with slightly more Memphis aspects to it. Um, but each stitch will be a different texture and it will just be fun and geometric. I mean, ugh, look how fun those are. Oh, I love them. And then this pillow over here. I also have this one. I think this one is more, um, history. Let's see, here we go. So here's another example of a geometric sampler. Oh, I'm sorry. It's getting a little dark in here, isn't it? I had to stop for like half an hour. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly it. Like the texture, the color. It's just a really fun way to practice your stitches and you end up with something that just, uh, just looks incredible. I just, I can't get over it sometimes. Like this is the stuff that really inspires me to do more needlepoint. It's why I want to you know, why it's on my list of things I want to do this year. I want to, that's right there on the back. I want to, you know, practice these stitches and get better at them so that I can do things like I'm about to show you in the next book. This is Mary Rhodes Needlepoint, The Art of Canvas Embroidery. And before I even can get to the year, right away, look at that. This is from 1974. Here we have this box. Bam, just undulating lines, crisscrossing some paisley, each section, it's not even finished. This isn't even done. Each section filled with a different stitch, some gold threads in here, and they just, they have so much texture and impact. It's just so stunning. And you know, in comparison to something like cross stitch, Needlepoint is, it can be done on a much larger scale, like you're using a larger mesh, your stitches can be bigger. And so if you do something like this, you can end up with a really substantial piece that can, you know, really look good over your couch. Oh, oh, so good. Yeah, again, I don't even know. I do wonder what this like looks like in person because they did clearly cut it out. So I don't know what the backdrop of this might look like, but I mean, here we have an example of them using gems and it looks like there's gold work in there, laid work, some stuff like that. Yeah, worked on 16 mesh canvas, mainly in Smyrna and tent stitches on a background of mosaic stitch. Large topaz and amethyst jewels, thick and thin gold cords, and Orion cloth together with silk and wool combined to produce a rich textural effect. I mean, it's just <sighs> so 
gorgeous. So here we have some history. We have traditional pieces. Here it talks about designing your own canvas embroidery. Then we get stuff like this, a representation of a shell. And it's not even in color, but the texture shines through and it just, it looks so spectacular. Okay, again, I, it, I don't like, I'm running out of words. I'm finally getting to my favorite book and I'm already out of words. Like it's, it's, it's just so fun. And so I guess my point here is like, you can just make up these abstract designs. And when you throw in these textural stitches, you're going to end up with a stunning piece, kind of no matter what you do. You don't have to pay $100 for a hand painted canvas, unless it's a design you really, really want, but you can create stunning, stunning pieces in needlepoint just by learning a few different kinds of stitches. Again, here we have some like gold fabric that's laid down. Interesting features are the holes which have been cut out and colored glass put behind. The use of interesting threads and materials such as gold, leather, and creosoted string and the effect of the double knot stitch. I mean, it's just so, so fascinating. I mean, okay, I have Sauron, maybe. So here again, we have just a red background, a couple different shades of red, but having these different stitches really elevates it to this, it's, it's art, like it is true art. And here, I can't even, I mean, these radiating lines and, you know, kind of, I can't, I'm not, I'm not good at describing this. I just, I'm trying to inspire you and I'm feeling so inspired and I can't make the things fast enough. This one, I actually was thinking the other day that it'd be really fun to do like a computer chip. And that really kind of looks like that. You know, it really, I think, speaks to the work when it can still have such impact, even in these black and white pictures. And then here's this. So again, we have more three-dimensional objects stitched on top. We have tiles. We have bits of stone with holes. We have ropes coiled in, you know, beads. And again, going back to just different, st different kinds of stitches to give it texture. And then over here, taking this traditional design, a coin in the middle. These are all other coin. They're all coins. There's so much more. There's so much more in this book. I mean, here we have these radiating like petals in this spiral design. Love it. Love it. Love it. And here we have again sampler style. Um, so again, here is what I'm going for with my Memphis stitch along. This one is a little bit more organic than geometric, but it still is just made up of different shapes with different stitches inside each shape to give it these this textural appeal it doesn't have to be anything and then over here we have just circles but they're done in these stripes this you could probably replicate in cross stitch you will be able to go a little bit faster doing something like this in needlepoint because you you're only doing one leg of each stitch so there is a bonus here we have walnut abstract Oh my god. Like, I just can't get over how they're so stunning, even in black and white. <clears throat> I mean, words are failing me. So again, we have this gold, like, fabric kind of stuff applique on top. We have gems. We have all the different stitches and just this radiating design that just it's just like spokes on a wheel coming out. You know, that's you, you can draw that you can do this. You know, you don't even have to be necessarily artistic. Find some abstract geometric kind of shape or, you know, lines radiating out from a point. You overlap some things and you fill each thing in with a different kind of stitch. And, you know, your color choices are going to come into play. But, you know, it's so encouraging to think that you can make something so intricate and detailed with really basic knowledge. So, you know... Now, this one definitely would take a little bit more uh, skill and forethought. That is definitely a very intricate drawing, but something like this. Draw an oval, draw an oval, draw an oval, draw an oval, spiral, spiral, spiral it out, 
fill in every space. You know, have you ever taken a piece of paper as a kid and you draw a whole bunch of lines and you make them crisscross and then you just color in each square with a different color? That's what that is. And you know, in addition to a different color, you're adding the texture of a different stitch. This piece is so beautiful. I mean, would you guess 70s if you were to see that? What is even going on there? Like, it's so wonderful. Oh, I can't even. We have this fabulous goat, which, you know, would take some drawing skill, but it's a pretty geometric stylized goat. Again, we've got different kinds of stitches going different ways, but they've used darker colors on the background to help the, the goat come forward. We've got zigzag over here, little blue elements, like just gold on the horns. And then over here, again, like that first picture that we looked at, we've got the mix of colors and just abstract shapes. This is the style of needlepoint that I love. This is the style of needlepoint that I just really want to learn how to replicate and make my own. And it's really achievable. And you also can set your artistic part aflame and really scratch that itch, you know? So, I mean, cross stitch and embroidery, cross stitch is fun, but I'm following a chart. It's not very artistic. It makes me feel like I'm creating. I am in the act of creating something that didn't exist before, but it's not coming from my own brain. Even if I've like self-drafted it, um, it's usually based on something, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but when I'm stitching it, it doesn't feel like the thing I've created because I already did that a while ago, you know? So now it's just like, okay, I gotta get this just right. But there's something just extra. It's just, that's what it is. Like, this is just so extra. Oh, it's and this is this is a loot. It's a stylized loot. Oh, oh, it's so gorgeous. So, so gorgeous. I can't. It's so pretty. Okay, are there any more? I think there's more. Now we are getting into the part of this book that is about the individual stitches. So let me just thumb through um, and see if there are any more examples. I don't, I, I want to find like one to like, I want to end on something really spectacular, but we may have already looked at everything. Like, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, look at that. It's just, it's like this, you know, flapper feather emblem on the front of this purse. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. I want to make all of these things. <laughs> We have lamps. We have picture frames and lamps. And oh my God, I want to do that. How do I find the right kind of lamp that I can cover in needlepoint? Oh my God, it's so pretty. I mean, yeah, and collect some dust. So you got to have a good way to like dust it off, take it off and clean it. But wow, just wow. Just, it's, it's, just amazing to me how much wonderful work is in this book. When you see Needlepoint today, when you see even other needle, some of the other stuff, you know, we flipped past in the other books and you just don't even realize what else it can be. You know, we have this, another one, black and white. We've got little sequins tied on and beads. And then we'll just end on this one. Just, oh man, it's like a little fuzzy supernova or something. <laughs> I can't even. Sections of unworked canvas are used as part of the design. Note especially the dark triangle contrasting with the light ground, the straight lines set against curves, and the square uniformity of the white area of cushion stitch against the exuberant variety of other stitches. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of given, uh, Marvel Infinity Wars, what you call it, when that happens. I mean, if this hasn't inspired you today to look into Needlepoint, I don't think anything is going to. <laughs> but 
to me, there are so many benefits of needlepoint. I still love cross stitch. I still love embroidery. And that's partly why I have not done very much needlepoint because I do enjoy doing all the crafts. And so it still ends up taking its turn. It really does me a lot of good to look through this again and remember why I was so inspired to start collecting needlepoint yarn and other things. Um, so that I can eventually get into making my own pieces. And that is why I wanted to make this needlepoint sampler and that we can do as a stitch along together because I really wanna start practicing and learning new stitches. I'd really love it if you would join me. I am going to have an entire video all on its own um, introducing that Memphis sampler stitch along. So be looking for that video, I do need to finish the sample piece first, I, you know, want to make sure it's going to look good before I put the pattern out there for you all. So there might be a little bit of a delay. I, I don't know if I'm going to get it out as soon as I wanted to because I do want to finish the sample first. And if you want a separate video on the introduction to needlepoint in general, um, I may do one of those as well. So I do hope you'll look for those videos in the future. Please make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. It will really help me out and help my channel grow so that I can reach more people and maybe expose more people to the possibilities of needlepoint. Oh, I'm just so excited. <laughs> like I wanna, I need to do it now. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed looking through my needlepoint books. That's not even all of them, but those are the most inspiring ones. And I really hope you've been inspired by this today. Uh, have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.